Good morning. How is everyone today? For those of you who haven't joined me before on a Thursday morning, my name is Colleen and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I come to you from a small town in Southwest Washington. This is my normal time every Thursday. You can find me on YouTube Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, I have a fun card for you today. This week has been all about not a ton of layers, um, no fancy folds. This week has been all about classic colors and trying out some new products and mostly simple stamping, which is what I actually love. It's my absolute favorite. But hey, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that Celebration wraps up in just a few short weeks. So what that means is that if you are planning on spending, you know, 50 or $100, oh, good morning, Tammy, um, that it is really the best idea to order in the month of February because then you have access to those free products that you can pick out. And some of them are just simply amazing. Also, no selling required if you want to take advantage of that joining special. In fact, I did a post on that yesterday because I get asked this question a lot. Um, you know, do I have to sell anything? I don't want to sell anything. I'm super busy. I've got kids or I've got a career or I, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I get it. But they, but these people are also my friends who absolutely love crafting and paper crafting. And my answer is always no, no, no. Just would be happy to have you as a team member for as little or as long as you want to stay. And just want to help you on your crafting journey. So please do not hesitate to ask me any questions. I love to talk things, all things crafty. Okay, so if you saw my video on Monday, it was an absolute disaster. So I'm going to try and redeem myself this time around. Coffee in hand. Um, really didn't work hard to redeem myself, but there are no promises with my videos. Anyway, silly goose. Totally out of my comfort zone. I'm a flowery kind of, layery, fun fold. Um, th those are the videos I've been doing, although I really am a simple stamper at heart, and I'm going to just kind of swing back that direction, I think, for a little bit. Silly goose, I'm going to flip you around, and you're going to see my very messy. Miss Lucy has been in here, and she has been just making a total hot mess of things. I've got more. She's um, just turned a year old, and so she has been making a hot mess, still chewing on everything. She... I don't believe she's full lab, but she's got something else in her because, not that labs don't chew because that's, they're actually known for that, right? It's more so because of her temperament. That girl is Henri. Oh, good morning, Jeanne and Sharon. Thanks everyone for popping in. So this is the Silly Goose. The reason I have the catalog out here is because I want you to notice that down here at the bottom, it says 13 cling or photopolymer stamp sets. So the cling stamp sets, you have your choice on this one. So if, you, if you're a cling person, you want to make sure to enter that item number. And there'll be a C in little, um, surrounded by that gray bold box, um, or P for photopolymer. They have two different item numbers. So I'm using the photopolymer, actually. I'm a little embarrassed as a demonstrator to say, that I didn't know that, and I just entered in the photopolymer. Now, I like photopolymer, and I like cling, so honestly, I don't know which one I would have chosen. So this is the photopolymer. I meant to grab out a cling set. Let me see if I have one right behind me that I would like to show you. Um, but, you know, it's the red rubber is the um, is your I, – I, I'm not going to take the time to look right now. But the red rubber stamps is your – that's what we refer to as cling, the one you put the stickers on. So anyway, and this is on page 27, but that is just something to take note of. So let me show you the cards that I have samples of, and I'm going to move my coffee out of the way because I don't want to spill it like I did a couple of videos ago. <laughs> anyway, this is the one I made during my hot mess um, video on Monday. Super cute card though, right? And then I did it also in balmy blue. This is the one we're making today. I'm changing the colors up though. Um, I actually think, I'm gonna show you the paper I'm using. I think this would make the cutest background for a Valentine's Day card. 
And that idea came to me around seven o'clock this morning, so I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> anyway, I shared this gatefold card the other day on one of my videos last week, and I decided to go ahead and fancy her up a little bit. You've got a friend in me. How cute is this? All very simple stamping and coloring. And then I don't often use yellow, but I thought that this just with that little, I made a little starburst there, like a little sunburst, I guess, with the goosebumps and, you know, kind of the geese little high-fiving each other. I thought that was super cute. Got to show you the oops. I was busy, busy, busy crafting yesterday and posting things online. You know how we do. And so I rarely ever, it's so funny, I rarely ever attach the inside of my cards. But no, I was going to just be just totally efficient yesterday and get things done. Mm-hmm. Sure I did. Yep. Right on the other, right on the wrong side. <laughs> But I know whose birthday is coming up. And you know what? I may just send this to her anyway and just say, oops, here's your blooper real card. <laughs> right on the wrong side. It was an upside day kind of day for me yesterday. Let me show you the paper I'm working with because I think it's super adorable. It's a Happy Forest Friends. And it comes in 12 by 12. So I cut mine down to 6 by 6 because I'm sharing this with somebody. So I wanted you to see the pattern. So, and then we'll move on. So happy forest friends in the annual catalog. Look, 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 how cute. And then on the back, you have your basic, your basic patterns, which I love. Um, look at this, how cute, right? We'll be using this one today. Um, more animals, more prints. My favorite are the leaves. Um, so that's super cute. And these are, I've seen these trees fussy cut so many times. And I have to tell you, people are doing such creative things by adding these trees, fussy cutting them, and um, either bouncing them up on dimensionals, gluing them to their card base. I have seen just some really, truly amazing projects just using this designer series paper and fussy cutting. Anyway, on the back. You get your fox and your owl. I love the owl. We have an owl who lives outside of my bedroom window. <laughs> and then look at these mushrooms. These are happy mushrooms. <laughs> and then this pattern here, which I thought would work perfect for Valentine's Day. So I may try and, you know, I always do a bonus blog post. I don't do a video or a reel. Um, I don't do very many reels in general. They're not my favorite. Um, but I uh, may do a bonus card trying to make a Valentine's Day card using the back of that and combining it with my Valentine's Day stamp set and see what I can't come up with with these geese. All right, let's get today's project started. Let me see, where do I want to start? I think I want to grab my Stamparatus here um, because I'm going to be using this Tuxedo Black um, Memento ink. And I have to tell you that... I will rarely ever get a good image the first time around. Uh, so for me, I like to put my basic white cardstock in my Stamparatus. So I have a couple of goes at it. Um, anyway, I had that white piece of paper cut. Let me see if I can find it. I don't think this is it. I think we're going to have to cut another piece, um, which, as you know, is not uncommon for me. <laughs> anyway. I just tell you, I think Lucy got in here and it totally, um, yeah, she just kind of totally moved my stuff around and she's a doll and she's adorable. She's just young, right? I mean, she's just young. So what are you going to do? So for my basic white, the part I'm stamping on is two and three quarters by four and a half. So let's go ahead and cut this at four and a half first. I'm going to go ahead and cut this at four and a half. And if I'm not in screen, I'm going to try and watch for comments. I'm not very good about that. But if you have any questions, I will for sure look before I sign off. And then we want it at three. No, pardon me, two and three quarters. So it is two and three quarters by, I think I said four and a half and I wanted four and a quarter. I bounced my eyes up for a minute. Okay. So the basic white is four and a quarter by two and three quarters. So there we go. There's our four and a quarter. And then we're going to go two and three quarters. That's exactly what we need. Okay, perfect. 
and that's going to fit. I'm using the Smoky Slate cardstock here. So the back of what I'm going to mount this once we get it stamped and colored is going to go on the back of a piece of Smoky Slate at three inches by four and a half inches. Normally I have this written out nice and neat for you to screenshot, but that was not this morning and I apologize for that, but I will have it all um, charted for you. Oh, charted. I'll have it blogged. Can you tell I was a nurse for a lot of years charted? Um, anyway, I'll have it blogged for you. <laughs> I know Tammy's watching and she's a nurse and she's probably laughing in her kitchen because I said charted and not um, blogged. <laughs> anyway, good morning, Joan. Um, you know, sometimes that nurse lingo, you just have a hard time getting rid of it. <laughs> I asked my husband, we were talking about something yes, the other day. And anyway, we were kind of not arguing, but we had a disagreement about it. And I remember asking him if he had documentation and he's like, I don't need documentation to support my point of view. Anyway, so we're going to be using this this little guy with the balloon. I don't know whether it's a guy or a girl. I'm going to call him a guy, though, because I'm making this a masculine card. So we're going to call it a guy. And I'm going to pop this one right down here. Kind of center. I'm not real fussy about things. So, you know, I kind of just center things as best I can. And I'm not real, real fussy. So... We're just going to call this good. I'm going to keep my example over here, kind of enough so I know where I want it. I think I want them up maybe. Maybe I am going to be a little fussy today. Let's just pop them up a little bit more. Anyway, <laughs> Tammy's literally, literally thousands of hours charting. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, there are. <laughs> anyway, when you're, when you are adding ink and you're using your stamp apparatus, which you'll find in my online store. You want to put something behind it. Um, you can put your stamp case. If you want something a little bit more solid, you can use an ink pad, um, but you do want something underneath of your stamp because it just, it, it'll just take the ink better. You're not going to be bending, you know, chasing ink on images with the plate kind of just tipping over there. So, and then look, we're just gonna press this down. If you don't have a stamp positioning tool, which is what the stamp apparatus is, it makes it so easy. If I was wanting to make duplicates of this card, which I probably would have, um, but you know, we're live here, um, I would just have all my pieces cut and my little tick mark there, and I would just go, go, go. Okay, so I'm going to actually take this plate and I'm going to flip it around because I'm going to, let me wipe that off with my chamois, I think, so I don't get ink all over my stamp case. Um, because I want to do the same thing with the sentiment. I want to, sentiment. Do you, all, do you all ever have those words that you have a hard time pronouncing? Mine is sentiment. So because I want to add a little bit of color up here and I want to make sure that my sentiment now that I have my goose all in the right order I want to make sure that I have it in place and I want a silly goose told me it's your birthday which is right here and I'm going to take it and I want to put it right I'm gonna center it as best as I can again I'm fussy but not fussy you know what I mean like you want it to, you always want your projects to look good, but we don't want to make ourselves so obsessive that we don't enjoy the process, right? So there we go. Again, this is a great, great way to do multiples, right? Just a great way. So I might have, had I grabbed a smoky slate ink, I might have used that for my sentiment. But since I didn't, we're going to go back to... Uh, memento. Oops. Unstick that and give it a little press. See, and it didn't take the ink there. So you know what? My piece of paper didn't move. It's still in the tick mark. We're going to add a little bit more ink just to that side because I don't want the other side any darker. I think that's plenty dark enough. And I'm going to give it a press. Now I have a perfect image. No fuss, no muss. And it is the best way to do multiples, just the absolute best. So um, the Stamparatus is one of those things that you can really um, order and combine. I can't remember how much it is. 
I should look. Um, but it's a good thing if you're looking at celebration products. Okay, so let me see here. I want to grab a piece of scratch paper and we're going to start coloring this image. And this will not take very long to color. It actually goes pretty quick. I have everything right here. This is how I keep my markers when we're doing things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take my dark balmy blue. It's a coordinating color. And I'm just going to go over these lines and give a little shadow on this side here. So that's the left side for me. That's what I'm looking at. And <laughs> Joan, you work in auto in automotive industry. Oh, my husband's always throwing out that automotive lingo to me, and I don't understand it. <laughs> anyway, so let's go. So I admire people who get the automotive thing. Anyway, so now I'm going to, these do not come off that hard. I just haven't used these ones very much, so they're a little tighter. Oh, for heaven's sakes. There we go. Color on, color on scrap when you use your blends, and I'm going to show you why here in just a second. And I'm also going to show you why I started with the balloon in a few minutes. Use the side of your pen. You don't want to fray the end. Um, so kind of go more on the side and not don't use the tip. Okay, this is why, because it will bleed through a little bit. It's normal. It's an expectation. Okay, so now I want to use my So Saffron. And my, what color did I grab? Old Olive for the hat. Oh, I forgot to do the bow. I wanted to do the bow. Let's grab that mommy blue back. I want to coordinate his little, his little celebratory sparkler thing at the top. There we go. What do you call that? You know, the little poof, little poof on his hat. And then I just wanted to, because I'm going to be using this old olive at the base, and I want to stay with a certain color palette. I don't want to throw everything in. Okay, so now for his beak, again, I'm going to be using, I think I wanted the darker so saffron. I did. So let's do that. All right. Let's get this going here. Look at that. Can you see how it comes together? And then I wanted to use pumpkin pie. His little feet look at this so cute oh my head's not in your way I just realized you probably got a good look at the top of my my gray hair <laughs> anyway cute 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 and then because I'm using the paper I'm using coordinates with the light gray granite that's the color I'm going to use I do believe that this would look equally as good if you have a basic gray mark marker I did show how to use these blender pens to pick up ink in the video. If you don't have either one of these colors, but you have the stamp pad, I did show how you can pick up ink using a blender pen in Monday's YouTube video, using a blender pen and your ink pad and a block. So you can always look at that resource, but I would fast forward to that part because I'm going to tell you that video is not good. Anyway, so at the bottom here, I'm going to kind of shade where the lines come together. I'm going to do just a little bit of shading. Not much. I'm not going to do a lot. Just, just where you would think maybe the natural shading would come into place. And then I'm going to just go around the wings. This is a white image. You really don't even have to add any color. I just chose to add a little bit. And then where he comes together here, I'm going to just do a little bit there also. Just fancy this little fella up a little bit. How cute. All right. So we're going to ground him now. And I just took my light old olive. And I kind of started here around in between the feet. Because, I don't know, it just kind of gave me a good starting point. And then I just brought this out. I think when you, I could have grounded this little goose with a ribbon, but since I'm not doing a lot of layers um, on this card, I want it to basically stay in the simple stamping, which is not coloring. Technically, it just stamps ink and paper. That is the true definition of simple stamping. But for me, I think it's just sometimes fun to do a little coloring. You could use your watercolor pencils on this if you have the pencils. 
You could use the blender pens, but again, in the video, I said you have to keep a really light hand when you use those blender pens so that your paper doesn't pill. Um, but I think sometimes it's nice just to make simple cards to send out. All right, so it's just that easy. Now, the reason I wanted to do that balloon first is because I wanted to give it a little sparkle, which you are probably not going to be able to see online. Here, let me bring out my scratch. And I because I wanted to add a little bit more, but I, oops, see, this is why you always start your Winkasella. I pressed too hard on a different piece of paper. So I'm going to actually get this out of my way. Um, so I always start my Winkasella on a different piece of paper just to make sure I don't end up with a gloopy mess. And that was totally my fault, not the product's fault. I pressed too hard. And I'm just going to give this a little sparkle. And I know you're probably not going to be able to really see it. It'll The shine will come along more as it dries. So what this is, this is just a glitter pen. It's all it is, is it actually is a little glitter pen. But when you mail it off, glitter doesn't get everywhere because this will dry. So I don't know if you can see or not. Um, just adds a little bit extra. Oh, thanks, Tammy. The Stamparatus is $49. So order some gems to put you over that $50 mark and you can get something else. Anyway, let's layer this. This is your Smoky Slate, three inches by four and a half. So great when other demos join me online because I have to tell you, I sometimes think, oh, why didn't I look that up? So anyway... Here in Southwest watching this this morning, I have to tell you, it is a beautifully gorgeous day. The sun is shining. All of you who have been with me all winter know I have done nothing but fuss and whine about the rain. <laughs> um, so beautiful sunny day. Really enjoying that. Okay. Easy peasy. Doesn't get any easier than that. I have my my thick basic white cardstock and I'm using this as my base and it's five and a half by eight and a half and I have to tell you I use a lot of white bases I love to use my cardstock for layering but I tend to use a lot of white bases you can actually use the if you only have the regular basic white and you don't have the thick basic white you can you can use that it's just that the thick is a little bit sturdier that that's all it is so then i'm going to bring in this color here um because i wanted this to be a little bit more of a masculine birthday card this is from the happy forest friends designer series paper we have our little you know our little wood benches and snails and you know tree trunks that's the word i was looking for i use them as wood benches <laughs> i actually do use them on as benches on our property if you live on property you know that's where you sit anyway and there's some snails and some little other things anyway and i'm just going to pop this like this you know it's a fun part when you go camping or when you're outside is all those tree stumps that you get to sit on it makes it kind of fun Anyway, so, oops, let's move that out from underneath of that. And we're going to use that as our background. So you can see that the most of Stampin' Up's designer series paper, well, it's all color coordinated, which makes creating so much easy, easier. Um, but it's not only that. It's just that this designer series paper has so many different uses. You know, if you're not into the whole animal thing, um, you know, the back side of this actually has been one of my absolute favorites. Now, since I'm not doing a bunch of ribbon and bows and fussing and bothering with this card, I'm going to take some dimensionals and I'm going to pop this one up on some dimensionals here. Um, and I'm a little dimensional happy. So you probably don't need this much. It's just, you know, it's what I do. Um, I mail most of my things. So I like to make sure it gets to the person that's receiving it. Just as it leaves my craft room. I like it to go together. Anyway, the nice thing with these kind of designs is it does make it a little easier 
to get it centered because you can line it up with your designer series paper. Also, some of the designer series paper almost gives like an illusion effect. So it makes it pretty fun. So I think this is perfect for a male birthday card. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love it, love it, love it. I am going to use, I was gonna put on some solid faceted gems and I still think I am. And I'm going to use these, um, the solid faceted gems. These are my gift with purchase this month for over $35. I will send you a package of these as long as you use the host code, which is right there. Anyway, and I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use. I think I'm gonna go with the balmy blue because that matches the balloon. So I'm just going to put one here and one here. I don't want to over fuss and bother on this card. And then I think I like to do things in threes. So I think I'll put one right down there. And then that's my triangle that I like, um, how I like to have my gems. And this is today's card. So pop back in, check my website, Cards by Coco, on Saturday for the bonus card. This is the other one I made with the inside. <laughs> How funny is that? So I made that one. This one here using the So Saffron. All of this is the same designer series paper except for this one. Um, but how cute. Just an easy peasy fun fold that you get to do a little bit of coloring. There's that one again, balmy blue. Um, this is from the Country Gingham. I guess it's not all. I thought I did it all the same, but I did not. Um, these two pattern pieces are from the Country Gingham. And then here is today's card. So you can see how easy. Look at all the cute little cards I have. A whole stack here with one stamp set and really just a little bit of coloring and simple stamping. So let me see if anyone has any questions. Oh, thank you. Yes, or that blender pen. Yep. Um, so anyway, thank you all so very much for joining me today. Hopefully my YouTube video on Monday will be better than this past week's. And if not, I hope to see you again next Thursday. Have a great day, great weekend.